but they'll lead you to believe that this is the best text. They'll lie to the new believer. So I encourage everybody to watch this video as an answer to this one. So Arling, how would you spell right out the 69? That Egypt question through faith that it's the true father. You concerning this. Okay then, Harlan. You say that you're going to answer my question through faith that it's the true father speaking to you, right? Well, let me ask you this then. Because somebody besides me was confused on this one. So was it you, Harlan, or was it the father? Was it really the father that made the mistake of you describing the symbol on that Bible cover? As it was not a mistake. It was to push you into showing fully the cover so we could go on the next step of the getting closer to the truth. It was not a mistake. You said yourself that I'm good at what I'm doing and what I'm doing, what I'm good at, showing people and their true art and to reveal the thoughts of many. My cousin, how was I able to cause her to show herself? Was it not by the same Holy Spirit that convinced her because I'm good at pushing people? It's working. It worked again. And it's still going to work. Unless you want to give up now. A challenge with Elijah is a challenge lost in advance. Being some type of Norse bear god? Or whatever the hell you said you thought it was. So you have this berserk. Ber so you've done this. And then. It's you jumping to conclusions once again, Hyland. And then you have all the leeway you need to start accusing people of just about anything you want to. As long as you tell yourself and everybody else that it was God telling us all these conjured up mistakes you keep throwing out there. Almost every chance you get, too. There's one thing that I learned from Jesus is that when I'm thinking, I'm right. And then after that, people make it plain or there's some situation that make it plain that I was wrong. Then if I wait and fade a little longer, then he's going to overturn again and show that I was right in the beginning, even though it seems that I was wrong shortly after. Because shortly after again, it seems that I was right. Let me give you an example of that. So now... Okay, the quelle part. The quelle part. Um... I'm sure there's something linked between this and that. Wait, you're sure that there's something linked between this and that? But the kilopot has 11 points and that Bible had 8. But you're sure that there's a relationship. Get over here, Harlan. I hope you find some... How sing the essence of holiness de Quillepot inherently evil? What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the, the poster for us right here. Here's the poster for us. Okay, us. I remember my cousin said there is no us. And we're looking at opposite direction is what it meant to be. Looks kind of similar, doesn't it? So is that what you're going to hang your hat on, Hireling? They look kind of similar, don't they? Okay. The KJV that I believe is the true accurate word for us to interpret in our time is the KJV 1611. What date is on this one? Is it 1611? Is it a revised version? Is it an authorized version? Is just an, is it a new King James? It's is it a King James version from another date? Those symbols. When I bought my Bible, the purple one, there was no symbol over it, nothing. So, and it was a sixteen eleven. Right. I mean, if we're supposed to. 
break this symbol down. Why can't we break this one down? Is that I'm sure that it has to do with the calipot. There's not the same amount of pointing, the point, but I'm sure it has to do with it. And once again, he says, I'm sure it has to do with the calipot. Then he says, oh, this might not be a 1611 KJV. So now we got to start just uh, cherry picking KJVs and nobody's going to understand anything unless they have an interpret named Hireling who thinks he's Elijah. Is that the way it works? Nobody's going to be able to understand anything. Nobody's going to be able to pick out a Bible on their own, right, hireling? If somebody got stranded on a desert island, Lord forbid they had that Bible that you just got done pointing at. All that symbology on there, that has got to be a demon's Bible. But turns out it has the same words in it as your 1611 authorized. Not the original, but the authorized. But that's as close as you're going to get, because that's all the more you want to look for. It's all about you, hireling. But that's okay. That's what narcissists are all about, themselves. Look, the different example, okay? This one, how many points? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So this one has ten, and it's showing the overall row still. This one has twelve. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six. Symbol over the Israel flag. So if you count the number of points, you still see the Ouroboros serpents here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Ten? This one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. You know, Harling, instead of just sitting there and counting all the points on each one of those individual stars, why didn't you just type in the meaning of the eight pointed star? or an octogram and you'll be able to pick all on your own whether you want that Bible to be good or bad because let's see what the first one is the eight-pointed star is a symbol with a long and complex history many different cultures have used it over the centuries each of whom has ascribed its own meaning to the symbol see so there's going to be a lot of different meanings to this eight-pointed star so I want you to pick out the best one that's going to put me in my place so, in general, the eight-pointed star is often used to represent purity, strength, and protection. It can be used as a talisman or amulet to bring good luck and ward off evil spirits. The eight-pointed star is a symbol with a long and varied history. Varied. Which one are you going to pick, Arling? The origin of the eight-pointed star is unknown, but it is thought to date back to ancient times. The first recorded use of the symbol was by Babylonians around 3000 BC. They used it as a decorative motif on their pottery and jewelry, but the symbol was also associated with the goddess Ishtar. Ishtar has been equated with Greek Aphrodite and the Roman Venus. The eight-pointed star later appeared in ancient Egypt, where it was associated with the goddess Isis. The number eight was also sacred in ancient Egyptian mythology, due to the nature of the Ogdod, a group of eight primeval gods. These deities were sometimes represented by octograms. So have you picked one you're going to try to pin on me yet there, hireling? The eight-pointed star is also known as the Star of Bethlehem. Uh-oh which is the star that is said to have guided the three wise men to the baby Jesus. In Christian symbolism, the eight points represents the eight Beatitudes. Oh boy, is that what you're going to go with, hireling? Not that Christian definition, 
It's going to go with the Buddhist wheel, Dharma Chakra. In Buddhism, an eight-pointed wheel known as the Dharma Chakra is used to represent the eightfold path as outlined by Lord Buddha. This is very similar in appearance to a ship's wheel, which is also highly symbolic in its own right. Although the symbolism with the ship's wheel is secular rather than religious, the star is also found in Islamic art and architecture, where it is known as the Rub el Hizb. Although idols and religious symbols are prohibited in Islam, diagrams and images such as the Rub el Hizb are allowed as a way to express faith and beliefs. The eight pointed star has also been adopted by occult groups and often used in magical rituals. Oh no. I'm going to get screwed here. The Wiccan Wheel of the Year, which features an eight-pointed star set with a circle, is a popular symbol representing major holidays. The eight-pointed star has become a popular tattoo and jewelry design in recent years. It can be seen as a symbol of balance, protection, and good luck. Another more recent interpretation of the eight-pointed star is as the symbol of chaos. Well, maybe you can pin that one on me there, Hireland. Forget the love and peace. Let's go with the chaos. The symbol has its origins in Michael Morrock's 1970 fantasy novel, Eternal Champions, where an eight-pointed star made up of eight arrows pointed outwards from the center is used to represent chaos. In opposition, a single upright arrow represents law. Symbolism of Eight-Pointed Star The eight-pointed star is a symbol of balance and harmony. This symbol reminds us that all things are connected and that we must strive for balance in our lives. The eight points represents the four elements, fire, air, water, and earth, and the direction, the four directions of north, south, east, and west. Hey, wasn't it just too long ago, Hireland, you were saying how uh, you were fire and Bernadette was air and and uh, Kelly was water. And I think Samuel, you know, was, I think he was earth. But see, it all changes now that it's pointing towards me. Now it's got to be evil. But if you had the eight-pointed star sitting on one of your Bibles, you would say, oh, it represents me and Kelly and Bernadette and Samuel. And I am Elijah. Don't forget that I am Elijah. But that's what it represents. The eight points also represents the eight phases of the moon, which is a reminder that we are connected to natural rhythms of the universe. These eight phases are new moon, waxing crescent, first quarter, waxing gibbous, full moon, waning gibbous, third quarter, and waning crescent. Eight-pointed star, a good luck talisman. The eight-pointed star, a talisman. That's the same thing that Rachel was hiding under her dress when Jacob took off from uh, Rachel's father. and She stole all his idols. It's called a talisman. The eight-pointed star has been used as a symbol of protection for centuries. Many cultures, it's believed that the eight-pointed star represents the eight directions of the compass and that the star can therefore protect against evil forces coming from any direction. The star is also often seen as a symbol of purity and strength and is thought to bring good luck to those who wear it or carry it with them. The eight-pointed star can be found on everything from jewelry to clothing to corporate branding. Whether you're looking for a talisman to protect you from harm or simply want a stylish piece of jewelry, the eight-pointed star is a popular choice. The eight-pointed star versus the compass. Yeah, I don't know, Hireling here. The eight-pointed star is often seen as related to the compass symbol. This is because the eight points on the star represents the eight directions of the compass. The star is also sometimes seen as being related to the symbol of a cross due to its shape. However, it should be noted that the eight-pointed star predates both the compass and the cross as symbols. Using the eight-pointed star. There are many ways you can use the eight-pointed star in your own life. For example, you can use it as a reminder to balance all your aspects of your life, work, play, family, friends, and more. You can also use it to help you focus on your goals and stay on track. 
The eight-pointed star can also be a symbol of hope and guidance. If you feel lost or confused, look to the eight-pointed star for guidance. It can help you find your way back to your path. Unless it's on your Bible cover. Right, hireling? Then, if you feel lost or confused, don't look at the eight-pointed star for guidance. It will not be able to help you find your way back on the path. Is that what you wanted me to say, hireling? When you use this symbol in your own life, it's up to you how you interpret and use its meaning. No, it's not. It's up to hireling. By looking at it around your neck or maybe a tattoo, you will be constantly reminded of what it means to you or hireling. There's no wrong way to do it. I bet you there is. Just ask hireling. Just trust your intuition or hirelings and go with what feels right for you or what hireling feels should be right for you. But it's up to you, I think, maybe. Wrapping up, the eight-pointed star has existed in various forms and in various cultures since ancient times. Because there are many versions to octograms, no single culture or religion can lay claim to the eight-pointed star. But I'm sure hireling will lay claim to one an evil one, I bet, and he's going to lay claim to it and give it to me. Yes, I will be designated as an evil person. All because Hireling said so. Thanks, Hireling. This one got 11 points. And in it, there is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 points. And in it, there is one, two, three, four, five points. There is a five-pointed star. Inside that has six, one, two, three, four, five, six-pointed star. Inside that, 11-pointed star. Let me just prove that it's the King James here. So you don't make something else up. The Holy Bible King James Version, large print compact edition. So unless you got a problem with that. What's the date on it? What's the date on it? Seems like you got a problem with a lot of stuff, but no answers, unless they're your own parable answers. And that's why. It's not a parable when I showed that it has to do with cosmic and solar, and you say it's better paint. How convenient. Wow, Hireling. That sure was interesting, the way you compared that book to Scientology and the stars and the moon and the worship of sun. Because that's Catholic, but then the book beside it you said was, you know, also evil because of the symbol on it. Jesus doesn't need a symbol, you say. And I agree with that, but hey, it came with the book, sorry. But uh, I found a Bible today I want to dedicate to you. It's the Holy Bible. You see right there, it's a King James Version. What's the date on it? What's the date on it? And I put your information in here. Present it. Holy Bible presented to Hireling by Gene Rebel. May the symbol on the cover of your new KJV Bible enlighten your path forever. 29 February 2024. Let's see. Well, what are they? Oh, that's the Bible that was sitting right next to that evil Bible that had a symbol on the cover. I remember. How come? How come this one's not evil? But I think you said it was kind of evil. But for some reason, it didn't get paint splatter on it. So it wasn't, you know, designated to be that particular Bible that gets called forth at this time to be made an example of. You know, Harlan, when you go to stores, I just got one yesterday. Look at this. Oh, I'll be allowed to use this one, too. Look, no, there's no symbols on the cover. This is a, this is a holy Bible. Revised Standard Edition. Now you probably don't even know what that means, but that's because it's not that you're not smart, it's because you don't want to know what that means. This is a revision 
of a 1901 revision of the King James Bible. It was all authorized by Britain and King James Bible. And what it was was to bring it up to date with the vocabulary. The thing that you have a problem with them doing. It doesn't focus very well. You know what, Harling? Let me read this uh, preface. It says, The Revised Standard Version of the Bible is an authorized revision of the American Standard Version, published 1901, which was a revision of the King James Version, published in 1611. The first English version of the scriptures made by direct translation from the original Hebrew and Greek. The first to be printed was the work of William Tyndale. He met bitter opposition. He was accused of willfully perverting the meaning of the scriptures, and his New Testaments were ordered to be burned as untrue translations. He was finally betrayed into the hands of his enemies, and in October 1536, he was publicly executed and burned at the stake. Yet Tyndale's work, it became the foundation of subsequent English versions, notably those of Coverdale, that would be the Coverdale Bible, Thomas Matthew, the pseudonym for John Rogers, 1537. Here's one you'll probably know is the Great Bible, 1539. Then we have the Geneva Bible. Then we have the Bishop's Bible. And in 1582, a translation of the New Testament made from the Latin Vulgate by Roman Catholic scholars was published at Reims. The translators who made the King James Version took into account all of these preceding versions and comparisons show that it owes something to each of them. It kept felictitious phrases and apt expressions from whatever source which had stood the test of public usage. It owed most, especially in the New Testament, to Tyndale. The King James Version had to compete with the Geneva Bible in popular use, but in the end it prevailed, and more than two and a half centuries, no other authorized translations of the Bible into English was made. The King James Version became the authorized version of the English-speaking peoples. The King James Version has, with good reason, been termed the noblest monument of English prose. Its revisers in 1881 expressed admiration for its simplicity, its dignity, its power, its happy turns of expression, the music of its cadence, the felicities of its rhythm. It entered, as no other book has, into the making of the personal character and public institutions of English-speaking peoples. We owe to it an incalculable debt. Yet the King James Version has grave defects. By the middle of the 19th century, the development of biblical studies and the discovery of many manuscripts more ancient than those upon the King James Version were based made it manifest that these defects are so many and so serious as to call for revision of the English translation. The task was undertaken by the authority of the Church of England, that's not the Vatican, Hireling, in 1870. The English Revised Version of the Bible was published in 1881 through 1885, and the American Standard Version, its variant embodying the preferences of the American scholars associated in the work, was published in 1901. So you see, King James was derived from all of these other works, Tyndale's, I think they used actually 85% of Tyndale's translations of the New Testament. I mean, they just took his translations and said, yeah, that sounds good. And they put them in there. And they may have been good. They may have been perfect. Hey, but that's just, I'm just telling you what happened. These are the Bibles that the King James Version went over and took out what they liked. The Coverdale Bible, the Great Bible, the Geneva Bible, the Bishop's Bible, all those Bibles, they went through all of those writings. They went through all those translations. And they revised all those, and they came up with the King James Version. And that's how it came about. And there's a lot in there. You need to read this stuff, Harley. This is knowledge. 
I know you probably text proof. Well, my, there's a passage somewhere my people die because of lack of knowledge. And you throw that out there. But it's true. You need to start going over these and not just saying these were written by demons. This was authorized by the Church of England, not the Vatican. And it's a revision, an authorized revision of the King James Bible. You don't like it. And when you look over at this one, the one that I gave to you, and you look over here at this one, see, there's no, there's no symbology on the front of that. This is a 1611. Let me show you something. I'll show you. There we go. The Holy Bible illustrates uh, containing the Old and New Testaments translated out of the original tongues and with the former translations diligently compared and revised. King James Version, 1611. What's funny is this one that I gave to you, it lines up more so with this 1611 than it does with my evil Scientology book over there. Oh, let me show you another thing too you probably didn't catch. At thrift store, I don't know who owned this. Look, I bet you that was a big dog that chewed on the corner of that thing. Look at that. These people had no respect. Oh, that reminds me too. It's there. I know stars on the backside. Is that the dark side of the moon Bible? A different cult. Look at that. Somebody, old oh, somebody dog was painting, and they got splatter all over the place. And now there's planets and moons and stars. Whatever Harlan can think up of in his mind. But anyways, the Bible I just gave to you, designated as your Bible, Harlan, designated, it doesn't match up with this one. It, it matches up with this one, the 1611. And one of the tests, well, two of the tests, Oh, come on. We're going to compare these two. Just so you can see that I ain't blowing smoke up your behind. And I ain't vouching for this other Bible either. There's crap out there everywhere, hireling. So, I mean, you got to be diligent and do your own searching. Just because it has something on there, you're right. Just because it has something on the cover doesn't mean that it's the true thing. But, oh, come on, camera. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks, comma, and three score and two weeks, colon. So they want you to add the seven and the 62 to make a one time period of 69. That's what this one does too, the 1611 that I smudged up. Going forth of the commandment to restore and to build Jerusalem unto the Messiah, the Prince, shall be seven weeks, comma, and three score and two weeks, colon. So, okay, this lines up with your 1611 so far, but let's find out about your green reptilian bush theory. Okay, in Revelations 9, 4, what was it? Verse 4. You said you had a problem because all the New Age Bibles were turning this to say neither any green plant. You said they removed the green thing. Verse 4. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree. You say a green thing is a reptilian. Okay, so you don't want that to say plant all right let's see what 1611 says okay we got revelations 9 4 
And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men which have not the seal of God in their foreheads. Okay, the 1611, there's your green thing. You had your green thing in your evil symbol Bible that nobody can ever read because there's a symbol on the front. So, let me ask you something. You know what I should have done? I should have came out with this one right here. Look at that. No symbols. No symbols at all. Could have took care of that. Oh, look, even more so. Somebody must have been a careful painter in their house. I don't see any smudges or anything. Look at this. Clean as a whistle. But the thing is, this is New American, the official Catholic Bible. Yeah, I could have snuck that one in there. Hey, man, we got one trying to get away with symbology not being attached. But, yeah, it says the same thing as that one over there. But you know what the kicker is? You know the mother of all... Oh, that one's heavy. Oh, this one's about ready to fall apart on me. The mother of them all. Check it out. The Holy Bible. Yeah, this is the papal. It, well, it's covered with duct tape, but it is the papal edition. It's the one that has the Apocrypha actually within the Bible. It isn't just segregated to one spot. And this is where Revelations is called... The Apocalypse, not Revelation. But I wanted to go to Apocalypse 9, verse 4. See what they had to say. Because if it was a conspiracy, you know, to make it sound like it was just vegetation by replacing thing, or green thing, which means apparently a reptilian with green plant. He don't like it. Let's see what the, the mother of all Catholic Bibles would say. And they were told not to hurt the grass of the earth or any green thing or any tree. There's your reptilian hireling. Even the popal. Yep, even the papal. Papal book, popal book. Even they didn't want to have part of that one. 